me and my boy are just trying to get some breakfast out here and I get a bunch of messages on Facebook. Robbie, there's more. I'm like, no, there's not. There's no way. Like, we've already got four articles up. There's there's no way. There was more. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. So we have legacy support for for hire. Maya Kashi. Trickstar? Or Trap Tricks? And a bunch of other interesting misfits that kind of decide to join the ranks. Now, as with all standard legacy support, these decks, these cards are meant to strengthen said archetypes, whether or not they be good or necessarily bad. For the archetype, Konami is going to smile at you and say, we tried, and that's all that really matters. So, take it for what it's worth. Also, as a Weather Painter support card as well. I'm very happy with it. I can only imagine the shrieks of joy that King of Bar is generating at this very point in time. So, let's dig on into this stuff. So first up, new Filio Messenger for Hire. Oh, it's a little adorable. He's a little cheeky. Zero, zero, though. Wind. Okay. So, Wing Beast, zero, zero. You can only use this card's first and second effects once per turn each. I love these restrictions. So during your main phase, splash summon one for Hire monster from your hand, except for Filio Messenger for Hire. This is the... Standard effect that pretty much all of these guys are equipped with, um, just part of the archetype. If a monster for hire is special summoned to your field while you control a monster, except during damage step, you can target one monster for hire in your graveyard, special summon it in defense mode, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. Ladies and gentlemen, you remember all that link spam that you're doing with this deck? The You're making the big guy, and then the big guy lets you bring out more stuff. This actually allows you to further recycle the pieces that you are committing to that link monster. They're doing a decent job with this support. God knows if they ever give a link monster in Duel Links. It'll probably fundamentally break the game, which, I, I mean, I guess. But for the most part, very interesting support card being added to the armada of already interesting stuff that for hire has i kind of think that the deck is okay for the most part but it definitely leaves a lot to be desired now next up is my akashi support now i was a little bit intrigued by this when i read this earlier so it's yuki masumune the ice my akashi she's zero nineteen we're not getting too crazy out here you can only use this card's first effect once per turn so if this card is in your hand or graveyard while you control a Mayakashi card other than Yuki Musume, the Ice Mayakashi. You can special summon this card from your hand, or special summon it from the graveyard, and then you can send one zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, they've given us a way to dump Mizuki in the graveyard. Ah, and I can recur this, too. Like, hello, free value. And then, of course, her continuous ability, you can not special summon from the extra deck except for Mayakashi monsters. They just had to shit on my parade. I, I, I gotta give them a little bit of credit, though. It's really cute that, yes, with the whole zombie theme that we've got going on here, giving us an in-house theme to kind of dump Mizuki in the graveyard, because, let's be real, climbing these Mayakashi ranks isn't going to necessarily be the easiest thing. We are gonna have to dig out to our boy Mizuki out here and get a little bit more love from that. So... Uh, she's also not a tuner, which is actually kind of something I was hoping for. But, once again, on the flip side here, in-house zombie foolish barrel that recurs herself for link climbing and level 1 to fix any sort of chains that you might need. Good job with this one. I do like this one. Now, next up, we got Magical Musketeers and Incantation. You guys remember when the Incantation were just assholes? Oh no, that was the art on pre-prep where they're just sacrificing people for free. So, Incantation Secret Study. This thing is a field spell, by the way. Like, you, you're going to get some crazy shit here. So you only activate one card with this card's name once per turn. When this card is activated, you can reveal one Incantation from your hand. And if you do special summon two monsters with the same name as that monster from your deck then shuffle the revealed monster into the deck. This is very interesting. So I reveal said big guy in my hand, uh, say Mr. X-Stars, and then I go ahead and I special summon two more copies of him from my deck, and then I can shuffle the one back into the deck. 
That's cute, right? Then once per turn, if a ritual monster spells them into your side of the field, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. Okay, so the first thing I do want to say, it is pretty cool that they are giving more support to Incantation. It's very clear that they're trying to make this be the theme for rituals. Um, I, I think that having generic ritual support was something we should have done in the first place. But this field spell definitely does leave a little bit to be desired for the deck, especially so many two copies of the same type. I mean, you're going to ritual them off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll take it for its worth. And then the next one here is, I believe it's called Bloody Crown. Yep. It's a little crown that he's wearing. I guess it's for brain control. So it's a continuous trap card, of course, for Magical Musketeers, baby. So, if you control... Only one, oh, okay, you can only control one face up magical musket bloody crown once per turn. During the main phase, you can special summon one magical musketeer from your hand, and if you do, if and if your opponent's main monster zone is in the same column, uh, that special summon monster zone is unused. It cannot be used till the end of the next turn. Is this where my Ojama support went? I was talking about the other day that the Ojama boss monster needed to take out a zone. Well, now you're telling me that uh, I can force my opponent to uh, be cut off from a zone? So that means if I have four guys on the field, I can force my opponent to give me card advantage? When the hell is that ever going to happen? Interesting interesting addition, though, to the deck. Um, I didn't actually think that Magical Musketeers would get the ability to shut off zones. I don't think this is inherently good, but, I mean, one more card in our arsenal... Of an already decent toolbox, I, I can't complain too much about it. I mean, decks might actually side this just out of curiosity, like enjoy breaking your opponent's extra link or some shit like that, depending on uh, what's going on here. Next up is Rain Bowie Canvas. Now, I know how many of you dedicated Weather Painter players there are out there. No, a whole two of you. But you got something relatively interesting today. So, you can only control one face up the Weather Painter Rainbow Canvas. Okay, it's pretty standard. Uh, the weather effect monsters in your main monster zone of this card's column and its adjacent columns gain this effect. If your opponent controls a monster quick effect, you can banish this card. Special Summon 1 the Weather Monster with a different name from this cards from your deck. Also, you're not supposed to summon monsters from your deck for the rest of this turn. I think they've tried to do it. The Weather Painters needed something like this, at least a little bit. The ability to kind of bring out additional support from the deck. I mean, call it what it is. Uh, you're still playing Weather Painters at the end of the day. But having a means, even if it's a trap card, to toggle out stuff to more monsters. Um, like I said, it's kind of the thing that Weather Painters have needed for a little while. Extra monster abuse, additional means to trigger effects on your opponent's turn to call out more friends. Um, honestly, probably one of the best cards that w I, I actually think, like, the clear winners here for these cards so far has literally been Weather Painters. I could be wrong. I might just be hyping this up a little bit too much, but, like, this card is so good to me. Now, the last one here is Chain Hole. Now, this is a normal hole trap card, which means stuff. So when your opponent activates a monster effect in a chain response to a card or effects activation negate that activation then your opponent can banish one card with the same original name as that negated card from their hand or deck if they do not you can banish one card from your opponent's hand so what are we looking at here so this does inherently negate a card it doesn't destroy it i can't be too mad at that but this also then forces your opponent to banish a copy of the card. If it's an extra deck card, your opponent can't do shit. Like, it, this card does not say extra deck. It says hand or deck. Unless there's a translation error where it does also mean the extra deck. But for the inherent first part at this current point in time, it does not look that way. Now, banishing one random card from your opponent's hand if they do not, I actually do like this. Uh, very interesting support card at least for hole-based archetypes at this current point in time. So outside of that, honestly, I think the Weather Painter card is the best card announced here. Uh, Bloody Crown is interesting. Incantation Field Spells, I in-house my Akashi dumping. Fine by me, and for higher support is always welcome. So what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below to meet what you guys think, and well, I'm out. Peace, guys. The ride 
never, well, truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a truffle shuffle and all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancol40 for some awesome Vanguard content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.